I could not believe it was finally happening. I was going to meet my mom. The hospital called at 3.30 in the morning to tell my dad that my mom had finally woken up and was asking for him. I know this sounds crazy, but my mom's been in a coma since I was born. I literally put her in a coma and she hadn't woken up once in 14 years. Until this morning. My dad burst into my room, almost knocking my lamp over on my bedside table. I startled awake and before I could even open my eyes all the way, he said, She's awake! Before I continue my story, I just want to remind you to like and subscribe to My Story Animated to hear more craziness like what you are about to witness. At first, I thought he was talking about me, and I was about to yell at him for waking me up. But then I realized what he meant. My mom was awake. My mom! I never heard her voice in real life. I never seen her eyes look into mine. I've held her hand, but she's never held mine. She's been here the whole time, but she has been so far away too. She had had a complicated pregnancy with me. I was a stubborn fetus, I guess you could say. I decided that I wanted to come early, which caused a lot of issues for her, and she was rushed into surgery to get me out. She never regained consciousness after she was put under anesthesia, and because of her family's beliefs, my father never took her off the meds that kept her alive. I had always had a feeling that at some point, I would have to be the one to end my mom's life. But thankfully, it didn't sound like that was going to have to happen after all. I bolted out of bed and ran to get my brother up. He was two years older than me, so he only remembers small fragments of mom in real life. He remembers her singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star every night, and she made the best chocolate chip pancakes in the world. The sad thing is, he doesn't remember her smile or the way she smelled. So this day was the best news for all of us. My brother never said it out loud, but I knew that he blamed me for what happened to our mom. And to be honest, I didn't expect any less. He was nice to me growing up, but I always felt like there was something between us that wouldn't allow us to get closer. He hadn't forgiven me. Did you know the longest time someone has been in a coma was 19 years? Terry Wallace was in a coma for many years before he woke up on June 11, 2003. The ride to the hospital seemed to last forever, and we all rushed in as soon as my dad got the car in park. Our happy reunion was cut short when the doctor stopped us outside of my mom's room. He had a grave look on his face. Something was wrong. She wants to see Emma, the doctor said, and my dad pulled me forward. He said no problem and tried to get the doctor to open the door. No, see, the doctor started. She doesn't understand that Emma is a teenager now. She thinks that she just gave birth to her several hours ago. I think all of our faces turned white. Of course, we had thought this could happen, but we didn't know what to do when it finally came to be. The doctor told my dad that he didn't want to shock my mother until we were all here at the hospital with her and we could introduce me. This wasn't going to be easy and we all knew that. I held my breath as my dad and the doctor went into my mother's room. All I could hear was some muffled talking from the doctor and my dad. Then my mom started to scream uncontrollably. Bring me my baby! I got goosebumps up and down my arms. This was probably the most afraid that I've ever been in my life. I was so afraid that my mother was going to hate me and that she was going to think I ruined her life too. I almost ran out of the hospital, but my brother nudged me forward. The door to the hospital room stood open in front of me, and I walked through. I had never seen my mom with her eyes open. She already looked so much more full of life than she had just days ago. Hi, mom, I said, twirling my fingers through my hair. I did that when I was nervous. My mom was doing the same with hers, as she said, Hi. My dad said that it was okay to step closer. I couldn't help but start to cry as I walked up to my mom. She had the same hair color as me, and her eyes were just as blue. My dad had always told me I looked like her, but I never could see it until now. In that moment, I felt like my mom had come back from the dead. I knew she'd been here this whole time, but she was as good as gone. I touched her face, and her eyes lit up. It's like she knew it was me. It's like she remembered my soul when she carried me in her stomach. It is you, she said, and she wrapped me in a humongous hug. We bawled together on the bed for quite some time. Then my mom pulled away from me and wiped her tears. It's so nice to finally meet you. The last time I saw you, you were on a black and white screen. She chuckled, talking about the sonogram. I've grown since then, I giggled, and wrapped my hand around hers. Since mom had been in bed for so long, most of her muscles were weakened. She'd need lots of physical therapy to get them back into shape. She wouldn't be able to leave the hospital for a couple of weeks, maybe even a month. And when she did leave, 
she would still be required to do lots of physical therapy and other therapies, I guess. Those other therapies would help her deal with all the time that had passed and missing out on our lives and things like that. The one thing we didn't know how to tell her was that our dad was remarried. We'd had a stepmom for the last three years. My brother and I had given our dad our blessing to start dating again after the 10 year anniversary of when my mom went into a coma. He'd been so lonely. He'd basically only lived for us and having someone there to help with the kids would be amazing too. We decided we weren't going to tell my mom that first day. We thought it would be too much to add to everything else that was going on. On the ride home, my brother blurted out that he didn't think we should tell mom at all. He thought we should make our stepmom move out, which I didn't think was such a bad idea either. Our dad wasn't going for that. He hadn't fallen out of love with my mom. He'd just become stagnant. And the fact that she was awake now seemed to be weighing heavy on his mind. He was silent almost the entire ride home. When we pulled into the driveway, I asked if he was okay. He looked at me with tears in his eyes and said he just didn't know what to do. We walked into the house and gave each other the biggest hugs. Our stepmom walked up and asked if we were okay. She knew what had happened and all of the craziness that was now going to continue. Except, she thought that my dad didn't love my mom anymore and that they were actually divorced, when in fact, he never divorced our mom in the first place. This was going to be hell for sure. Later on that night, while my brother and I were supposed to be sleeping, we snuck down the stairway to listen to my dad and stepmom talking in the kitchen. So what are we going to do? My stepmom was asking. My dad was silent when she continued, saying that obviously we would need to contact my mom's family and have them help out. My dad said we were her family and she would stay with us. My stepmom hated that idea and suggested that we get a hotel room for her until we could figure something out. That's when he dropped the bomb. We're still married, he blurted. My stepmom nodded. Yes, we are, and I have every right to say what happens in this house. He gave my stepmom the side eye and said, No, I mean that I'm still married to her. So we aren't even legally married? My dad shook his head. I could tell he was crying again. My stepmom let out the biggest scream I'd ever heard. I think it blew out my eardrums. With ears ringing, my brother and I rushed down the stairs when my stepmom was slinging horrible words at my father, her face in a red rage. Her things were packed within a few hours, and she was off to her sister's house. I could tell my dad was hurt, but he looked almost relieved as well. By the end of the week, my mom was ready to come home. We set up the guest room for her, but we were surprised when she came in the house and went directly to the master bedroom. My dad didn't say anything, but my brother spoke up. He told her to put her things in the guest room, and she looked hurt. It's okay, mom. You can sleep in the master bedroom tonight. I tried to assure her. Tonight? It's my bed, my house. She looked confused and worried. And then she asked where our stepmom was. We told her she left, and I don't know if I saw relief on her face or terror. We all helped her get settled in the bed and she took a nap while we discussed how we were going to introduce my stepmom to my mom. However, not long after, our stepmom came to the door and knocked loudly, waking my mom up. My brother answered the door and in a hushed tone, he told her to be quiet. Just as the door shut again, my mom was on the landing of the stairs. Everything okay? She asked and came down the stairs, coming face to face with my stepmom. Mom, this is Lisa, I said, stepping forward. Lisa crossed her arms as my mom put her hand out. Realizing that Lisa wasn't going to shake her hand, my mom put hers back at her side. She offered Lisa to come on in and Lisa snidely replied, I don't need to be invited into my own home. I guess it just shows the type of person my mom is, but she didn't reply with something nasty and rude. She graciously smiled and offered Lisa some tea. Then she said, We can all call this place home. Lisa scoffed. That's when my mom almost lost her cool. Instead of flipping out and yelling at Lisa, she stirred the sugar in her tea and quietly said, You're not the one who had their entire life ripped away from them, so I don't know what you're so upset about. You're taking my husband away, was all Lisa could muster. My mom reminded Lisa that she had actually taken her husband away first. She also said that it was extremely upsetting that Lisa got to watch her children grow up a little while she lay unconscious in a hospital bed. That's when Lisa jumped up and spilled hot tea all over my mom. I quickly sprang into action, as did my brother. I grabbed a towel to help my mom dry off. Luckily, the tea had some milk and sugar in it, so it wasn't scalding, and my brother pulled Lisa away, shoving her out the door while simultaneously screaming for our dad. He ran down the stairs like lightning. What is it? What's going on? He asked. We explained what happened and my dad took off out the door after Lisa. I helped my mom up the stairs and we got her in the shower to get the tea off of her. Then we heard shouting outside. My stepmom and dad were back. All we could hear was Lisa screaming that my dad lied to her and there was nothing he could do to get her to forgive him. I was hoping she would leave, 
but she came into the house and shoved herself into the master bedroom right past my mom. I asked Lisa if she could have some respect for my mom who was changing, but she snarled at me and started stuffing a bag full of clothes. I'm out of here. Don't bother calling me, she said to my dad as she quickly left again. Over the next few days, my dad tried calling her, but she wouldn't answer. He tried to get a hold of her sister, parents, and everyone else that would know where she was, but no one would give him any clues. During that time, he was also taking care of my mom, driving her to some appointments and making her food when she was hungry. My brother and I were busy with school, so thankfully, he was able to keep her company. A couple weeks after the crazy incident with Lisa, my brother and I came home to see our parents sitting on the couch together, my mom's feet across my dad's thighs. I couldn't believe the sight. When we came in the door, the two looked as if we caught them doing something wrong. They blushed and tried to scramble away from each other. My brother and I burst out laughing. They were married after all. We didn't mind that they wanted to get closer. It had been almost 15 years since they'd been able to do that. That was the moment we thought that we had our mom back. She was still pretty weak and often didn't understand how to use technology, but she was smiling more and cracking jokes. Her and I talked a lot more too, and I told her about almost everything that I've done in my life to catch her up. We cried a lot, and I held her while she apologized for not being around. Then things started to get strange. She'd wake up very early in the morning and turn on all the burners on the stove. The refrigerator door would be wide open, and the house would smell like gas fumes when we woke up in the morning. The last time that this happened, she was sitting out on the porch while everything in the kitchen was running, including the sink and the microwave. The back door was left open, and I saw her curled in a ball. I walked out of the door and asked her if she was okay. She didn't answer. I sat down next to my mom and put my arm around her. When she looked at me, all I could see was pure terror in her eyes. Who are you? She asked and pulled away from me. I looked at her utterly confused. I'm your daughter, Emma. No, my daughter is a baby. I just had her a couple of months ago. Who are you and why are you in my house? Dad? I called and it took a few minutes, but he showed up on the doorstep. Something's wrong with mom, is all I could say before she grabbed my hair and pulled my head back. She started screaming, where is my daughter? And my dad grabbed her, pulling her arms behind her back. It was then that she snapped out of whatever trance she was in. She started crying and saying, I'm sorry, Emma. I ran upstairs and locked my door. To say I was terrified would be an understatement. Something was going on with my mom and we needed to figure it out. My dad called the hospital and they told him she may have had some memory lapses, but this was way more severe than a slip of the mind. She physically hurt me and she's a very small woman. There was something else going on here. I spent the next several days trying to keep my distance from her. She apologized to me several times after the incident on the porch, but I was still afraid to get close to her. My father and brother had no problem accepting her back into the family. They would play board games and watch movies together, but every time that I would join in, I could tell that a dark mask fell over my mom's face. She would constantly stare at me out of the corner of her eye, and I swear I could see a red glint flash over her normally bright eyes whenever she didn't think I was looking. Then, one night, I woke up to her staring at me from across my bedroom. I popped up in my bed and asked her if she was okay. She didn't reply, but I could see her eyes in the darkness. They weren't right. I screamed for my dad again, and when he came in the room, he flipped on the light. She wasn't in the chair anymore. We searched for her everywhere in the house, but she wasn't anywhere we could see. That's when we heard the blood-curdling scream. Tune in next time to hear what happened with my mom in the woods.